Hey, Husky fans, welcome back to Fourth and Inches, a Husky podcast from Sports Illustrated Husky Maven Channel. My name is Trevor Mueller, and with me is Kayla Olin. Uh, Kayla, we debriefed uh, and debriefed and debriefed, and now it's time to turn the page to uh, what really we thought was going to be, at the beginning of the season, a game that Washington would just use as a tune-up as they get into Pac-12 play, not knowing that they need to win this game to come out of you know, the non-conference with, with a who win. get their first win of the season. It's insane. Right. I also think that going into it, it was kind of just like, okay, if Washington loses to Michigan, it's going to be a great game to fine tune those final things before yes. facing a good cow. It's going to be a nice Saturday. It's going to be chill. One fifteen kickoff. I'm going to enjoy something like, nah, no. Yeah. Also this game really matters. Uh, and not only is it just uh, getting ready for Pac-12 play, but really, if you look at some of the things that were said in the press conferences, um, Richard Newton was not shy about his comments about uh, improving, making something out of nothing. That's absolutely a shot right at John Donovan's offense. Um, uh, Chris Peterson, who oh, that one, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jimmy Lake saying that uh, you know, if you want to point and blame at somebody, point and blame at him. And uh, I think, you know, we've we've gone over that and, and we do. Um, but man, I think that right now, all of a sudden this game, if, if Washington's offense can't muster some points and some yards and some positive plays and some first downs, uh, I think the seat on on Donovan just catches fire. And really, we're going to talk about this later. This could be a dress rehearsal for uh, a possible uh, OC up and coming guy, uh, there with Keith Heckendorf. So, um, Kayla, kind of, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I know we, you specifically, you did all of your research. It was one of the most interesting names that you threw out there, just because when some people hear, where is your experience and you hear Arkansas state, it's kind of just like, okay, okay. But then you can go back and look at the numbers that they have put up so far in just two games this right. season and their numbers that Washington can't even hold a candle to. No. And I think, yeah, it's bad. That's the craziest thing in two games. Arkansas state has 95 points, 95, 95, 45 first week, 50 last week against Memphis. Right. And if, okay. Points don't really mean a lot to you. 680 total yards last week, 680. I don't think Washington has that cumu- commun- cumulatively. Yeah! <laughs> you got it. I can't, I can't with that word. That word's hard. You did 580, 582 passing yards. Right. And so, A, that's really good news for Washington that they only had 98 rushing yards. Right. But also... If this is one of those auditions, so to say, for the next OC, hey, passing was what seems to be lacking for Washington right now. And if someone likes to pass and call plays that utilize passing as their strength, then it's pretty good audition tape. Right. And and Jimmy Lake even said this is going to be the fastest offense they've seen, and that's absolutely right. But that doesn't mean they can't run the ball. They uh, in their in this game. They threw the ball 66 times and they ran the ball 32 times. And really that's because they were in a shootout. But last week in their win, uh, it was about a 50-50 split of run and pass. They also have two really good quarterbacks, uh, Lane Hatcher and um, James Blackman. Both of them have played and they both put up numbers. Uh, it, I'm curious to see again, I, I think when we get more to the keys, I don't know if their offense is going to be able to have the same success that they've had because we know that this Washington defense is good and specifically the secondary. Um, The question that is going to keep coming back when you're one of the worst in the country, when it comes to points per game at eight and a half a game, can Washington finally the worst in the country? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the team that was last, they just fired their OC. So, the, and, and we're talking about a game against Montana and Michigan. There should be more points on the board. Can Washington score against a defense that gives up points and they give up yards? 
but can Washington take advantage? I fully believe that with the playbook that we have seen thus far, no. Yeah. And these aren't Montana size kids. Right. They are kids from the SEC. And right. they're some decent sized kids. They're some kids that have gotten offers from Alabama who went to Alabama, didn't get to play, transferred right. out of transfers, Alabama. Yep. It's not like this is another FCS school. Mm-hmm. And this was supposed to be the second easiest game of the season yep. just because they're the bottom of the SEC. It doesn't mean that they're a horrible team. It just means that they're at the bottom of a good conference of the best conference out of the power fives. So if Washington struggled with Montana, who knows what's going to happen coming forward? Like just to, just to put it completely honest for everybody wondering how this game's going to go. No, it's not going to be a cakewalk. Right. Yeah. And, and Arkansas state, uh, if you look at last year, they did go four and seven, which uh, at first blush, you'd say, like, that's not good. But you got to remember when you're coming from the Sun Belt, you're just not going to there's some games that you're you're going to lose. Um, obviously, they're, they're having a problem with with their rival Memphis. Memphis beat them last year as well. But then they went and they beat Kansas State, which I mean, that's a big 10 te- uh, big 12 team that has had success. Um, they they obviously got beat up pretty bad by Coastal Carolina. Um, they they won some games that they should have Coastal uh, Central Arkansas, Georgia State. But then some of their losses, you look at them and they're teams that you've heard of. Appalachian State, Troy, those are good teams. Um, so they definitely it's I think Washington's going to win. And I think you think that, too. But it's it's still with where Washington's at right now. Nothing is an automatic. Especially when it comes to looking at what it takes to beat a fast offense. Yeah. And if, say, Arkansas State is on pace for their average, which is 47 and a half points a game, that's 30 and a half more points than Washington has all season. Right. So will Washington be able to go toe to toe with the Red Wolves? I'm not sure with what we've seen, especially you mentioned a comment from Richard Newton taking a little jab at John right. Donovan. Jackson Kirkland threw one out. He said he'll sleep at that office or on the field if he has to to get some stuff done. Right. And yeah. And, yeah. and, and- and I guess the question to you is, before we get to some key matchups that I see, uh, do you believe Coach Lake? Do you believe um, Jackson Kirkland? Do you believe the things that Terrell Bynum um, saying that he still believes in whatever JD calls? Do you? I do. I believe J- Jimmy Lake. I'm still. I, I, I've. You know. I. We've. We've already talked about where we're at with the offense. But do you believe Jimmy Lake and do you believe Jackson Kirkland who say that they're they're going to get this ship headed in the right direction? It's hard. It's hard. And to answer your question with a little bit probably more words than I want to say or, you know, you want to hear other people want to hear is Jimmy Lake, I believe in him as a coach and that he can turn this program around. Right. I don't believe in what he's feeding at the press conferences. I, I like that he takes responsibility and, you know, he said, you're going to talk about somebody in a headline or an article. You talk about me, that type of thing. No, no. Because at the end of the day, in that same press conference, he says, yeah, if we have to, we're going to go ahead and maybe send him upstairs to kind of make these plays. And at that point, you're not working with your offensive coordinator. You're sending him up there because you know that he's just not doing his job on the field. He needs to kind of see it from a different perspective. And so it's almost like a say what you mean, mean what you say. Yeah. And I think it takes a big person to not point fingers and, you know, say, wasn't happy with the play calling, yada, yada, yada. Right. 
that's the part that is frustrating to me is I want him to publicly put John Donovan on blast and be like, we brought him in. We expect a little bit better. It's not happening right now. We think it, we think it could, but something in terms of play calling or how we go about the offense needs to change. Just something simple as that. Yeah, I think you're right. And um, I just, I, I really hope uh, for, for the sake of the program that uh, we see something that uh, is, is giving us some evidence that there's something changing uh, in the offensive philosophy. But I mean, I just have a hard time uh, seeing a, a total change in the way that the offense you know, runs after watching really similar football for two straight games with not a ton of results. And the crazy thing is you mentioned Jackson Kirkland making that statement, right? Mm -hmm. And do we believe in him? This, this kid's playing for his future, right? It's, it's not like he's already in the NFL and he's just trying to get a paycheck. I don't think he wants to perform the way he's performing. Right. I think he fully knows that that's not their ceiling mm -hmm. and he knows they can play better because they have played better. Right. Why it's not clicking right now and why it's not working. I don't know. And I actually don't put the, I mean, I don't think the offensive line has played particularly well, but I also don't blame them for the lack of running production because I do see a lot of issues when the box is absolutely stacked full of Wolverines uh, and you run uh, a power up the middle with a fullback uh, leading leading the block, there's no room. Uh, and I don't think the running backs, as we talked about earlier, have uh, really shown, you know, what Husky fans have been used to going back over a decade, going back to Chris Polk, Bishop Sankey, and then Savan Ahmed and uh, Miles Gaskin, where those guys were, when it came to vision and, and finding the holes, were really good. And I think... I really think Cam Davis is the guy to do that. Um, we'll see what happens. But uh, my big, on the offensive side of the ball, my place where I think is the most important is the offensive line. Because if the offensive line is able to do their job and John Donovan puts them in the right position, they are going to show why they were considered one of the best offensive lines in the country. That and there needs to be just more creativity. Yes. If you're John Donovan, you say, you know, like, I mean, Wolverines didn't have to adjust to our play calling or Washington's play calling or how they were lining up. Mm -hmm. It was very predictable. You know, be creative. If you're John Donovan, you know, call a play. Say, if you see this and, you know, as a center, you're kind of pointing, you're watching for right. those things. You're seeing how it's lined up. You are the captain of that offensive line. You need to start talking about that and saying, okay, this is how we're going to adjust. Yeah. And, uh, and then, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say that there's just no depth to that playbook right now because we've seen a handful of things on a like we have not seen two hands having to carry a playbook we've seen one yeah yeah and it hasn't been creative just like you said um, on the offensive side of the ball this is a high-powered offense that uh, is going to uh, they ran 100 plays uh last game uh, they ran 80 something the game before so they're going to be fast but Washington's defense, I think, is stout and they're, they're athletic. Uh, where do you see, uh, where are you going to have your eye on, at least uh, defensively in this game? Defensively, I'm definitely going to have my eye on the DB, specifically kind of the trio with yeah. Trent McDuffie, Kyler Gordon, and then Bookie, just because that trio is the ones that are always consistently on the field at the same time. You usually have Trent on, if I'm looking at the line from the defensive side, my left, Kyler's yes. on my right, Bookie's more of that nickel in the middle. Yes. And they cover it really well. It almost, and Bookie kind of, he shifts a lot. So he watches where the strong side of the receivers are, where there's trips, where there's doubles. Yes. He really watches the strong side to make sure it's kind of always balanced, so to say. And with so much passing in the pass heavy offense that Arkansas State looks to have, and statistically the numbers say that they have, if those three can have a stellar game, lock it down, keep plays in front of them, not give up big chunks of yardage, 
I think that's probably going to be the best matchup is those receivers and those three DBs. I mean, all the DBs, but those three specifically. Right. Yeah. And you know, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the depth chart came out and um, <laughs> Buki is one of those guys. He's actually, he's on here as a junior. So he has another year and I, I don't know what his aspirations are, if he's going to think about coming back, but I've seen Buda Baker in him uh, where it comes to how good he is in coverage and really how good he is at disrupting the passer and, and as a tackler. I, I think that he has been an absolute um, gem of a find for this defensive coaching staff. What I, 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 I noticed, love, love Buddha, love Buddha, yeah. but he, he cannot get into the backfield the way that Bookie can. It's pretty impressive. It actually, I mean, we're, we're up here in the Pacific Northwest. It looks like uh, Jamal Adams almost is, is how he's getting to the quarterback. Uh, the other interesting thing of note is we have two brand new starting safeties for this game. Um, Cam Williams, who we talked about in our, in our uh, review show, who had uh, some really impactful plays towards the end of the game. And then Alex Cook, who delivered, um, delivered the biggest hit of the game, I think by far, uh, are both now starting. What do you think about this defensive backfield? I mean, you kind of already talked about it, but uh, what do you think about those moves at safety? I was so happy to see that. I think you can go back to two years ago now. Gosh, yeah. these, these seasons go by fast. Isn't these well? last couple of years. But when Cam Williams had two interceptions in one game. Yeah, against uh, USC. And against USC. Yeah. And he kind of dropped off the depth charts almost. We don't really see him much on the field anymore. It he was didn't play those, at all in 2020. Exactly. It was one of those head scratchers. You know, where is he? Where mm -hmm. is he? And so for him to come in, like you said, made some pretty impactful plays towards the end of the game. While the game was a little bit more out of reach, he's back in the lineup and it makes me excited it what was that one thing just that clicked right to make him finally get that start again and it makes me even more excited for him to get that start and then of course Alex Cook's big hit was it was he took the soul right out of the guy I mean it was it was impressive um so I kind of to wrap it up it's a 17 point spread UW is obviously right now going to be the favorite because they play in the bigger conference. Um, they've had some really tough times, but 17 point spread, that's as many points as Washington scored all season. So uh, against the Whoever spread, did those lines was like, I've got a joke for Washington fans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, with that, um, before, uh, before we go to the point spread, uh, who do you think wins this game? Every part of me wants to say Washington, every single part of me, but I will go Arkansas State. Whoa, with the big old upset. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I am still on the lake train. I'm still with the lake show. Man, I just want to see this offense uh, do something. Um, I think that I think they win. I, I'm not, I'm not going to take the seven. I don't think they're going to cover the spread. That's not going to happen. No. Uh, and I think they're going to win an ugly game because they're going to be better on defense than Arkansas state. Um, that being said, there's going to be some major questions still around this program, around the offense and around the play caller um, after week three, going into PAC 12 play, which is not a good thing for this program. I, I so desperately and preparing for this show, you know, I kind of sat there and I'm just like, who, who am I going to pick? Who am I going to pick to win? Yeah. Because it's not going to be 17 points. There's no way that covers at all. No. And in turn, it came down to how I saw the programs and making their adjustments. Right. If Washington had tweaked even just a little bit between the Montana and Michigan game, Kind of like, you know, burn me once, sure. you know, shame on you, burn me yeah. twice, shame on me. Yeah. And that's how I feel going into this is with no adjustments made, with 
not being, oh, cool. You got three more points than against Montana. Congratulations. Right. right. Here's the participation trophy. Yeah. That I, I just cannot be confident enough for them to have made the adjustments from Michigan to Arkansas State because, again, it's Arkansas State. Right. Should, should be a little bit easier. I, I just, if I'm a betting, if I'm a betting man, I see Arkansas state. Man. And, that's why. and you know what we got, we got blind faith over here and she's to my left over there. She's evidence-based. Uh, you know what? The evidence proves that you're, I hate my job. Like <laughs> <laughs> man, I hate my job. <laughs> right. But you know what? The evidence points to, to your, you know, you're, you're basing yours on empirical evidence. And, and the fact is this offense has not been good and they have to, they have to make a change um, or it's going to be a very long season. And if there's not a change made, this, this could go South uh, really quickly. And uh, that'd be a shame because we both, we both, I, I love Jimmy Lake. Um, and I, I love, what he's done for this program and I want him to be successful. And uh, so uh, unfortunately that means making some tough choices, um, fixing the game plan or getting somebody new in there that can. So Kayla. The only hope in, because we haven't mentioned on this one yet is that with Clay Helton being fired after he's taken some pretty brutal losses, he's taken some pretty brutal losses. Right. Right. But it was finally the Stanford loss in week two, week two of this season. Yeah. And they said, we're done. Goodbye. Thanks for everything. But time to move along. I hope that that lights a little fire, a little fire underneath John Donovan and Jimmy Lake to make the necessary adjustments. Yeah. And we're going to see coming this Saturday and, and we'll be back with you on Sunday morning. Uh, breaking it all down and uh, we're going to see how this goes but for Trevor Hopefully Mueller not in bed. yeah 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 if they lose Kayla's doing it from her bedside so uh, um, well you know curlers and all so we'll see you then hopefully you're in a chair because Washington won and you haven't given up all hope yet so for Trevor Mueller Kayla Olin go dogs go dogs <laughs>